is move over to talking about how to find that slope. All right? So I said that there are going to be three parts to this section. To start off, what is a linear function? Part one, part two, part three. I'm going to break it down for you. So part one is in, in all of these, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. Find slope. Except I'm going to give it to you in three different ways. The first way that we're going to do today, I'm going to say, hey, if I give you an equation, like maybe look something like this, what's the slope? That equation could also look like this. Um, y, I've got to put a Y in there. Part two is going to say, hey, here's two points. Um, 3 comma 2 and negative 8 comma 1. Hey, what's the slope? It's not an equation, but it's the slope. And you can get the slope from two points. And then the last way that we're going to learn about is, hey, here's a graph. Here's a graph of a line. What's the slope? So this is all we're doing for like a week, finding the slope. Okay, we're not writing equations, we're not graphing. I just want to know, do you know where to look for the slope if I give it to you in three different forms? Okay, so to kind of talk about that, I'm going to take you back to the last test we took when I talked about Emma babysitting, right, in Oklahoma. So here is X was the number of hours that she worked and Y was the cost, right? So do you remember me saying, hey, zero hours? She earned 10 bucks. What did that mean? How do you not work any hours and still get paid? They pay you for coming. Yeah, they pay you for showing up. Here's your gas money for the week. Thanks. Here's Merry Christmas. You get a $10 bonus. So if she worked her first hour, and after this, she had $18 in her pocket, does that mean she made $18 an hour after one? Does that? No, she doesn't make $18 an hour, even though it looks like it because that's what's under the one. And so do you remember what we had to do? We found the change in the y and divided it by the change in the x. And so the change in the y is only actually going up 8. And the change in the x was going up 1, right? And then do you remember saying, oh, what did she start at? And when x was 0, raise your hand if you remember doing this. We maybe got a 3 or a 4 on it. So you said y equals 8x plus 10. Awesome, right? Okay. So actually, just to kind of give you an idea of the difference, this would be her getting this would be her getting eighteen dollars an hour. Zero zero. One eighteen, right? Two thirty six, and so on. That would be eighteen dollars an hour. But I want to point something out. Do you see the one eighteen in both of them? So you can't really go by the numbers in the table. You have to go by the numbers that are the differences, right? So the numbers in the table don't tell you anything. It's the difference in those numbers. Okay, let's get back to it. We called this a rate of change. I said, what, what is the rate that Emma's pay changes by? And you said $8. Yeah, $8 an hour. So now that's the number. That's the slope. And we know that. So let's talk about how we can look at, uh, find that from an equation. I want you to write y equals mx plus b. And then I want you to maybe just kind of, I don't know if you have a darker, darken in the Y, darken in the X. Because those are almost always going to be there. You're going to have a Y, you're going to have an X most of the time. What is the M? M stands for slope. Why didn't they use S? Probably because it either looked like a 5. Anybody in here take French for their language? Okay, so there's a French word called monter, and it means to climb. And so the French word monter means to climb. I know last year Mr. Meeks told you that they used it for Miss M for Mr. Meeks. That's how important he is. But monter is the actual real one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know any of the reasons behind that. He also told us that constant of proportionality was used for K to stand for Chris. K to stand for Chris. That's hilarious. That worked out lots of ways, didn't it? So M stands for slope, okay? And that's our unit rate, rate of change, constant proportionality, all that stuff. And the B, do you remember what that was? It was the beginning value. But wait, I don't want you to write B because we're not going to, or beginning value, because we're not going to call it beginning value. 
we're going to call it what? Y-intercept. So that's got a new name. So instead of rate of change in beginning value, it's slope and y-intercept. They mean the same thing. This was the old beginning value. But now that we're talking about lines on a graph, I don't need to know the beginning value. I want to know the y-intercept. And then the rate of change, which is our slope that we're calling it now. Okay. This right here is probably the most important form you're going to learn this year. And it's got a special name. It's called, don't think too hard, slope intercept form. <laughs> right? Okay. Here's why they call it slope intercept form. Because just by looking at it, you can say the slope and you can say the y-intercept without doing any work, without picking up a pencil. So you mean, as long as I put y equals and then an x and a number, like maybe 6x plus 2, you can tell me the slope and the y-intercept? Yep. And guess what? I don't even care about the y-intercept today. We will later, but I don't care about it right now. All I'm asking you for is what's the slope. So you're going to have a little line on your paper, and you're going to say m equals. Well, guess what? I'm looking at it. It's 6. It's literally the coefficient of x on one condition, though. Slope-intercept form needs, needs, needs to have the y all by itself. There can be nothing else with the y. So you may hear solve for y. You may hear get y alone. All of these things mean slope intercept form. So for example, I could say y equals negative one half x plus seven. What's the slope? I know, you're like, is it really? It's got to be harder than this. Like, I'm, tri I, this is, no, it's negative one half because that's what's in front of your x. And I mean, it gets harder, okay? So stay with me because it's going to get a little harder. All right, are we good so far on that? Let's do a couple more. This one's a little trickier, not too bad. Y equals x plus one. And let's say plus four. Well, if y is alone, Slope is the coefficient in front of x. I don't see anything. It's a 1. And so your slope is actually 1 because it's the coefficient of x. Do not overthink it. So if the, that slope is 1, what's that slope? Negative 1. Negative one. That's it. That's it, guys. Okay, so we're going to kind of go through this in like levels, kind of like, you know how I like to do notes sometimes. Level one is kind of like the level everybody can beat, right? This is the video game that everybody can beat that, okay? Um, this is still an example of level one, 2x plus 4 equals y. I mean, what's the only difference? Is y still by itself? Yeah, it's just on the other side. Big deal. What's the slope here? Negative 2, right? Okay, how about this one? 8 minus 3x equals y. So those are a little flip-flop. What's the slope still? Negative 3. If y is alone, it's the number, the coefficient in front of x. Ready for level 2? Okay, everybody pass that level and beat that level. So level 2 is a little trickier. Level 2 says, okay, 2x plus y is equal to 8. What's the slope? And somebody who doesn't pay attention while I'm talking is going to say 2. No. They heard part of what I said. They heard me say the number in front of x. But they didn't hear what? When, when the y is by itself. Is the y by itself? No. So what do you do? You get it by itself. And good thing you are all expert equation solvers, right? Because if there's something on one side of an equation that does not belong, how do you get rid of it? You 
do something to both sides, and we do the inverse operations. So if this is what I want gone and it's being added, this is one of the hardest things that people, because they see two and they want to divide by two for some reason. No, I need the whole term gone. I need the whole 2x gone, so you have to subtract it. And now that it's gone here, you have two options. I don't care which one you do. I'll show you both. You pick which one you like. I like this one. Slope intercept form to me is the y, then the x, and then the, B, the y intercept, right? Some people don't like that. Some people will say, nope, I gotta put it in the order and the eight's there first and then the 2x. You go right ahead and pick which one you like better. I kind of feel like that's what the standard form of slope intercept is. Because I like looking here and knowing, okay, that's my intercept. That's my slope. Whatever you feel like you want to do. Okay, let's try this one. Negative one third x plus y equals seven. I want to get y by itself. One simple step. I just have to do what? Get rid of this whole negative one third. And so what do I do? I add one third x. And then you have a decision to make. What order do you want to put it in? I'm going to put it in this. Okay? And then, oh, we've got to write what the slope is. So here, the slope is negative two because it's in front of x when y is alone. And here it's one third. Okay? Whatever you have to do to get that y by itself, just do it. It's, yeah, sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes that works, yeah. So here's the deal. <clears throat> Are some of you able to find the slope and tell me what it is without having to show any of this? Yeah, I'm sure you could. But later, you're going to have to do something that you have to show this whole equation. Guess what? Right now, do I need to know anything about 7 or 8 or 4 or any of these other things? No, but I will later. So guess what? You may as well learn it now. Okay, all right, ready for the next level? Next level says, okay, let's do the, oh, actually, one more of this one. Four is equal to three X minus Y. When it's a minus, people start to forget things. So if I wanna get Y by itself, it's super close to being by itself. First thing I gotta do is get rid of this X term. So I'm gonna subtract it. You're faced with a decision. What do you want to do? I want to put the x first, then the coefficient or the constant, negative y. And a lot of people just leave that and they tell me the slope is negative 3. But is y alone? No. It's got a negative 1 as a coefficient. Okay? So we're going to um, leave that and come right back to it because I have to show you this problem before we finish that. So just watch this. So if I say 12x minus 4y equals 8. <clears throat> if I'm looking at this problem, I see that I have to cancel out my x term first. So no different than what we did in the other two. Negative. A lot of people forget that negative. I have to write that little arrow so many times because people just bring down a positive 4y. Negative 12x plus 8. All right, last time we were done, but we're not done. Because y isn't alone. It's got a coefficient of negative 4. So what do you have to do? It's being multiplied, right? So it's the opposite of multiplying. Dividing. Now, dividing is all good and dandy when there's like an 8 over there. But there's an expression here. So how do I divide both sides when one of the sides is an expression? You have two options. You divide both sides by negative 4, just like you would have thought. Except a lot of people don't know what to do with that. Okay? What you do with this is exactly what you would do if it were being distributed, except it's not multiplication. So if I had a 4 here and then an expression here, what would I do with that 4? I would multiply everything in the expression by 4. You're going to do the same thing here, except you're going to divide everything in that expression by 4. Some people don't like to write it like that. It confuses some people. So you know what they do? And this is playing it safe, and there's nothing wrong with that. They do it here, here, and here. And now there is no confusion on what you're supposed to do, is there? So in order to do this, 
you know that y is going to equal divide a negative 12x by a negative 4 and you get 3x divide a positive 8 by a negative 4 and you get look negative 2 which I don't really care about right now but I will later what's my slope 3 okay so m equals 3 for that one so now does that help solve our dilemma with what we were left with over here Negative y does not mean y is alone. I have to do what? And dividing by a negative 1 just changes the sign. Negative divided by negative is positive. This is now a negative, and now that y is positive. And so now what is your slope? Now that y is officially and truly by itself. Okay? All right, we're almost done. So now, let's talk about some um, crazy looking things. Let's look at this. X minus 4Y equals 20. Okay. Get the Y by itself. What do you need gone first? The X term. So subtract it. Negative 4Y equals negative X positive 20. All right. This is another one people often get wrong. Divide everything by negative 4. We're almost done, guys. You're doing great. And that leaves me with y. And then here's where people go, huh, huh, I don't know. Because last time there was a 12 as a coefficient of x, and 12 divided by 4 was 3. So that's what I put. Well, there's nothing there. Oh, so is it just 4? No, there is something there. It's a coefficient of... And so what number are you looking at? One fourth. So what's the slope? One fourth. So when the x does not have a coefficient, it always has a coefficient. It's just not showing. It's one. And one over four is one fourth. What's a positive 20 divided by a negative four? Negative five. What's my slope? One fourth. Okay? So when you're coefficient of x is a 1, your slope is 1 over whatever you divide it by. And then some of them are just a mess. Some of them are going to look like this. Ne 0, there's nothing over here. Negative 2y minus 10 plus x. Psh, everything's on one side. Okay, so let's be, let's work smarter and not harder. You ever heard that before? So a lot of people are like, oh, I got to get y by itself. First I'm going to add 10, then I'm going to subtract x. Is there a quicker way, a more efficient way? If you just need y by itself, can't you just move the 2y and get it over to the other side? Sure. Then I only got to move one thing instead of two. I don't care what side the y is on. If I add it here, I add it here. So now I have a 2y equaling negative 10 plus x. Finish it off. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. 1 half x. So what's your slope? 1 half. Got it? Okay. So now, all I did was teach you how to find the slope. And there's two special cases we got to do. And then we are done. So I want you to write special cases. If you don't, if you're at the bottom of a page, um, maybe make a go to the top of the next one. Okay. Special cases mean anytime a teacher says special case, it means what they just taught you isn't going to work for these next couple problems because there's a special different way you got to do it. So I want you to write y equals five and x equals two. Draw a little line. So special cases. Y equals 5, X equals 2. Well, I told you that slope-intercept form was Y equals MX plus B. And in slope-intercept form, there's a Y and an X. What's missing here? What's missing here? 
a Y. So a special case is when you only have one variable, either all X or all Y. So let's kind of discover what that means for us. So table of values is like our best friend because if we don't need to know how to do anything, table of values helps us. So this says make all your Ys five. Five, five, five. Two or three is enough. Pick whatever you want for X. One, two, three. Let's plot those points and see what we get. So if I go one, five, two, up five, over three, up five. What's happening? I have, yes, a hor what kind of a line? Okay. Horizontal, not just straight. And I already heard it. I think Kelly said it. What's the slope of this line? Zero, right? Because this is the sidewalk. This isn't a climbing hill. This isn't a skiing hill. This means M equals zero. So guess what I want you to put right above Y equals five? M equals zero. Because zero is a horizontal line, right? Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what happens with the vertical. Oh, I just actually told you what was going to happen. With the X. Let's make all of our X's, like you probably couldn't have guessed it anyway. Let's make all of our X's too. Let's make Y whatever we want. One, two, three. Let's plot it and discover what happens. Let's go over two, but up one. Let's go over two, up two. Over two, up three. What kind of line do I have? Vertical, right? And what kind of a slope is a vertical line? Undefined. So above x equals 2, I want you to write m equals undefined. So, this is a lot. So I need you to just guess what? There are a lot of people every year who get these mixed up. Horizontal and vertical lines are special cases. One of them's zero, one of them's undefined. Oh, shoot, I'm just going to, it's 50 50 chance. I'll just put it down. Here's how you're going to remember it. What letter is that? V. If I do a little reflection of that V this way, it turns into the letter X. So in the letter X, you see Vs. So an X equals is vertical, and the vertical is undefined. Okay. Somebody else said it in 15 years of teaching. I had never thought of it like this. They said if you flip the Y upside down, it looks like a what? H for horizontal. I thought, oh, my God, that's so cool. So if you flip the Y upside down, H is horizontal, and horizontal has a slope of zero. Okay? So I can give you these types of equations all day, and you can give me the slopes. The minute that I say, all right, Give me the slope of y equals 5. What is it? Zero. zero. Give me the slope of x equals negative 1. Undefined. Yes? I, am, I actually find those way easier than the other ones. They are.